massive news from Microsoft and Ubisoft today in relation to the Microsoft Activision Blizzard takeover. Yes, today it was announced that Microsoft will be transferring the cloud game streaming rights to all the Activision Blizzard titles to Ubisoft. Now, I've seen a lot of bad takes on this, a lot of misinformation. And will this mean that the Microsoft Activision Blizzard deal finally gets signed? Let's take a deep dive into this, clear up the information and explain it all to you out there. So as I said earlier, Microsoft has made a commitment to transfer the cloud game streaming rights to all the Activision Blizzard titles for a period of 15 years in perpetuity. This is outside the EU to Ubisoft Plus. So what does this all mean? So let's break it down. So this is the official. So we're going to go from official documents here other than The Verge. All you're going to hear from me are the facts based on the official documents from the parties concerned. So other than Tom from The Verge, no other journo takes on this. Just the facts from just the official sites. So this is from Microsoft. Microsoft and Activision Blizzard restructure proposed acquisition and notify restructure transaction to the UK's CMA market authority. So all this is about is about trying to appease the UK CMA, who of course blocked the Microsoft Activision Blizzard deal. The CMA blocked the deal specifically in relation to the nascent cloud gaming market, saying that if Microsoft acquired Activision Blizzard, they would have too much power in the cloud gaming market because not only will they own a massive catalogue of all these massive Activision Blizzard titles like Call of Duty and all of that, but they also own the operating system, Windows, on which most of those games run on. They also would control the terms on which those games would be licensed out to anybody as well. So despite the fact that Microsoft said, no, no, that's fine, we'll license the cloud gaming rights to GeForce Now and we'll license them to Boosteroid and Ubitus, that wasn't enough for the UK CMA because they said, yeah, you're still in control of how and when those rights get licensed. And, you know, you're still potentially limiting it to Windows based platforms or to platforms that don't have an all you can eat subscription model. Yeah. So that kind of suppresses the potential of the cloud gaming market. And the UK CMA made it clear that the only remedy that they might consider would be some kind of divestiture. This is exactly that. And this is why it is more than likely to go through because they have done in the UK and outside of the EU exactly what the UK CMA suggested might be a remedy to get this through. Anyway, so as we look here on the uh, main document, today we are taking another important step regarding this transaction to address the concerns about the impact of the proposed acquisition on cloud game streaming raised by the UK CMA. We are restructuring the transaction to acquire a narrower set of rights. This includes executing an agreement effective at the closing of our merger that transfer the cloud streaming rights for all current and new Activision Blizzard PC titles. So all the current titles and everything created in the next 15 years from Activision Blizzard, the cloud streaming rights outside the EU will go to Ubisoft in perpetuity. So every title that exists and every title that exists in the next 15 years will be licensed in perpetuity to Ubisoft Plus. And Microsoft are doing this specifically because they feel this is what it's needed to get the UK CMA to approve it. And the UK CMA have come out and sort of said it does look sort of promising, but it's not a green light yet. They still have to go through the due diligence and look at the actual, actual document. It still has to go through the basic process because it's like a new deal. OK, I get it. That's frustrating. It's annoying. Why can't they just cut out the UK? Why can't they just get the deal signed? You still got to go through the process, however boring and frustrating that may be. But stick with me and I'll tell you why. Basically, despite what everybody thinks, the consumer wins in the long run. 
frustrating though it is right now and how it feels. Under the restructured transaction, Microsoft will not be in a position to either release Activision Blizzard games exclusively, and that's the key thing, on its own cloud streaming service, Xbox Cloud Gaming, or exclusively to control the licensing terms. They're using language specifically here to appease the UK uh, CMA, i.e. that Microsoft won't be able to exclusively control the terms of those licensing deals. And the agreement provides Ubisoft with a unique opportunity to commercialise the distribution of games via cloud streaming. Again, they're using language here about this will enable enable Ubisoft to innovate and encourage different business models in licensing and pricing on the cloud game streaming services worldwide. Again, this is addresses directly what the UK CMA's concerns were. It's not just about, fine, you say you're going to license it to GeForce Now, you say you're going to license it to Boosteroid, but what are the terms? You're still in control of the terms on, on how you're licensing it. And you may choose not to license it, say, to a cloud gaming platform that decides it wants a sort of a Netflix all-you-can-eat style subscription service because that's what Games Pass offers, an all-you-can-eat subscription style service. And you might not want anybody else to have an all-you-can-eat subscription style service. Well, with those with those titles on board. Well, now Ubisoft can do deals like that and offer an all-you-can-eat deal or offer it to a gaming platform, a cloud streaming platform that offers an all-you-can-eat kind of um, platform. The other key thing here, which again was a point raised by the CMA, it also gives the opportunity to offer Activision Blizzard games to cloud gaming services running non-Windows operating systems. So Luna runs on a sort of Windows, So, but that, that is a, uh, a potential example. Um, there's a slight tweak, but roughly it's, they run on a Windows-based system. But take Stadia. I know it d doesn't exist anymore, but as a cloud gaming platform, that was a non-Windows platform. So previously, until this Ubisoft deal, it would have been unlikely to see Activision Blizzard's titles on a platform like Stadia that's non-Windows, which is a suppression of potential cloud gaming innovation and, and the marketplace. Now, Ubisoft can do those deals. Again, the language used here is specifically to address those points that the CMA raised. And one of them was about, you know, platforms that run non-Windows operating systems. There was no deal announced with Amazon Luna like there was with GeForce Now, basically running PC games, or Boosteroid, basically running PC games. Luna sort of run PC games, just with a bit of a tweak, but no deal was announced with them. Now you are more likely to see Activision Blizzard titles arrive on Luna than you were before this divestiture. So basically it goes on to say here, their obligations to provide cloud game, uh, cloud streaming rights in the EU remain in full place. The agreement with Ubisoft has been structured so that Microsoft will still acquire the rights needed to honour fully its legal obligations under its commitments to the EU, EU Commission, as well as its existing contractual obligations to other cloud game streaming providers, including NVIDIA, Boostroid, Ubitus, and Nware. So those deals that they announced will still be in place, albeit in a slightly different structure, but that's Microsoft's and Ubisoft's issue. It's not our issue as a consumer, okay? And as of today, it was announced that Xbox Game Pass PC launches on... So it was announced in May that Xbox PC games would be coming to GeForce Now. And then a few months later, it was announced that Xbox Game Pass would be coming to GeForce Now. And now, this week, today, it's been announced that that Xbox Game Pass PC app, as it were, launches this week on GeForce Now. So those deals that they announced will still be in place. Let's look at the Ubisoft announcement. Ubisoft today announced the signing of an agreement which will give Ubisoft cloud streaming rights to games like Call of Duty and much more coming into effect upon the completion of the acquisition of the deal. Okay, and it repeats all the current slate 
and all the titles over the next 15 years. The games will land on Ubisoft Plus. Okay, so this is not to say they will not land on other cloud gaming platforms. Let's make a very clear distinction here. This is Ubisoft saying we will offer them as part of Ubisoft Plus. So all your Assassin's Creed's games, all that that you already get with Ubisoft Plus, added to that will be these Activision Blizzard titles. Why not? Indeed. So this is what this is all about. This announcement is specifically about. It's not, it's less about them announcing and we'll do deals with all these other cloud gaming companies. This announcement is more specifically about how through a single subscription to Ubisoft Plus multi-access, players will soon be able to play their favorite Ubisoft games and stream cloud streaming their favorite Activision Blizzard games across multiple platforms, including PC, Xbox consoles, and Amazon Luna. So there we are. There's the Amazon Luna mention. And on PlayStation, it's through the Ubisoft Plus Classics. The agreement will offer players an even greater access to a large library of beloved Classics titles. So you're getting all the Ubisoft titles and all the Activision Blizzard titles through Ubisoft Plus. So let's be very clear. I've seen some people going, oh, brilliant. You have to have an Ubisoft Plus account to access the Activision Blizzard titles. No, that's not what this is about. This is specifically about Ubisoft adding Activision Blizzard titles to Ubisoft Plus. Yes, but it's not exclusive. This These cloud streaming rights are being given to Ubisoft to distribute to other people, to other platforms. Of course, they're going to have it on their own platform and their own subscription service, but you'll still get them on GeForce Now, you'll still get them on Boostroid and and a other gaming platforms, uh, cloud gaming platforms as and when they arrive, okay? So let's be very distinct. I've seen some people on Twitter say, oh, you've got to have an Ubisoft Plus account to access, you know, the Xbox Game Pass games via cloud, not another subscription. No, that is not the case. For example, if you have uh, Xbox PC subscription or Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. As of this week, as I said, you'll be able to start accessing the games, the Xbox PC games via GeForce Now. And more than likely, that will conclude the Activision, that will include the Activision Blizzard games as well when the deal goes through, thanks to Ubisoft. Okay, so let's just be very clear about that. So that's Ubisoft's take. Very, very exciting. And let's go to the CMA here. So the CMA have basically confirmed that the deal as was, the deal as, as was presented earlier, is blocked. Okay? That, this is just process. This is nothing to, you know, kind of be up in arms about. They're just saying the deal that went part, the deal that was offered on the table before is blocked. There is a brand new deal now on the table. And the UK CMA, okay, the, basically the UK government, the UK CMA will look at this new proposal, which includes this divestiture of the cloud streaming rights to Ubisoft separately, and they hope to have that concluded by the end of October, 18th of October. So, yeah, I get it. Look, it's really frustrating. Damn you, UK CMA. You, you know, why can't the deal be done already and all of that? I get all those shouts and all those moans, but process is process and it's you know bureaucratic and all of that, but it has that has to go through the right steps. Microsoft recognised that. That's why they said nothing but nice things about the UK CMA and about the head of the UK CMA and all of that because they, they want to be nice. They want to get the deal done. And they basically addressed the points specifically raised by the UK CMA that the UK CMA hinted at may be needed to get this deal over the line. That's why I'm fairly confident now they've done what they've needed to do. And this provides a win to the UK CMA. It provides a win for consumers. Bear with me on that. And, you know, albeit not quite how Microsoft wanted it to go down, it's still a win for Microsoft because their prize is really king, the king part of Microsoft Activision Blizzard, king. It's the mobile gaming bit. So, Yes, this is extra bureaucracy on Microsoft's part, but to the consumer, it's not going to be detrimental. This extra bureaucracy is not going to be detrimental to the consumer. The consumer wins because now there is a wider range of platforms 
that we might see these titles on, well, cloud gaming platforms, that is, that we might see these platforms on. But let's be very clear. The CMA has confirmed today that Microsoft's acquisition of Activision, as originally proposed, cannot proceed. Okay, that is just process. Separately, Microsoft has notified a new and restructured deal, which is substantially different from what was put on the table. And that is that Activision's cloud streaming rights outside of the EEA will be sold to a rival Ubisoft, who will be able to license out Activision's content to any cloud gaming provider. This will allow gamers to access Activision's game in different ways, including through cloud-based multi-game subscription services. This is what I'm talking about, bundled, you know, like an all-you-can-eat subscription service. This is one of the issues the CMA raised. We will now consider this deal under a new phase one investigation. So, as I said, frustrating though it is, annoying though it is, the phase one of the investigation has to start again. This is not a green light. We will carefully and objectively assess the details of the restructured deal and its impact on competition, including the light of third party comments, blah, 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 blah. Now, given that it was really this bit of the jigsaw puzzle that the CMA, the cloud streaming rights aspect and Microsoft being in control of those deals, that was the issue that the CMA had. And that's why they suggested divestiture may be a solution. Well, it, it seems that Microsoft are just basically giving the CMA what they want to get this over the deal. And they would only be doing this in ongoing behind the scenes conversations with the CMA of what, you know, what might work, what might not work. What do we really need to do? What do you need to see from us to get this done? And I think this is the result of those conversations. So, yeah, frustrating though it is, given the time, I think it is more likely than ever the deal will go through. This is subject to the FTC in America and everything and all of that, sorting their act together. But I'm less concerned about that. I think Microsoft have a much stronger case. And now with this as well, even stronger, to be honest. So it's all summarised here uh, by Tom, from the, Tom Warren from The Verge here. The restructured deal means that if Microsoft does close its proposed acquisition, it will not be able to release Activision Blizzard games exclusively. OK, that's all that means. It doesn't mean they won't. Oh, will they not release them in the UK? No, it just means it's not exclusive. They won't be able to exclusively control the licensing terms. Ubisoft will control the streaming rights to Activision games outside the EU and then license the titles back to Microsoft to include in Xbox Cloud Gaming. OK, so yes, you will still get the titles. The Activision Blizzard titles will still be on Xbox Cloud Gaming. It's just a kind of bureaucratic process that is an issue for Microsoft and Xbox to sort out. But as consumers, we will still get what we were promised, as it were, or what we thought we might get. We'll still get Call of Duty on Xbox Cloud Gaming and all of that. That is not an, uh, an issue. And then Ubisoft will compensate Microsoft for the cloud streaming rights to Activision Blizzard games through various one-off payment, market-based wholesale pricing mechanisms and various business models. It will give Ubisoft the opportunity to offer Activision Blizzard games to cloud gaming services running non-Windows operating systems. So there you go. So to summarize, yes, this new deal or proposed structure on signing of the Microsoft Activision Blizzard deal or completion of that acquisition means that Activision Blizzard titles, the current slate, plus the next 15 years of games from them will be part of Ubisoft Plus, along with all the other Ubisoft sort of type games that we have from Ubisoft Plus, okay? That's one thing. Secondly, the titles will appear on other cloud gaming platforms. They will be licensed by Ubisoft Plus in the UK and outside the EU to various cloud gaming uh, platforms. The existing obligations that Microsoft made to GeForce Now, Boosteroid, Ubitus, Nware, etc., and probably EE in the UK still stand. They will still get their titles. We know, for example, as I say, the Xbox PC gaming app comes to GeForce Now this week. We are more than likely to see Activision Blizzard titles either come via that or come via Ubisoft in a different way. But the Activision Blizzard titles are more than likely going to appear on all the cloud gaming platforms 
as per normal, just via Ubisoft in the UK. And thirdly, yes, the Activision Blizzard games will come to Xbox Game Pass. I hope that's all clear. I hope that makes sense. I get the frustration. I get the annoyance that it's taking so long. But at the end of the day, as I said, the consumers actually, despite all the negative barbs thrown at UK CMA, have benefited through the Competition and Market Authorities process, both the EU and the UK CMA. If it wasn't for the EU and the UK CMA, you would not get or you would unlikely get the Activision Blizzard titles appearing on GeForce Now, Boosteroid or, you know, accessed via other platforms. They would be more than likely exclusive to Xbox Game Pass and things like that, especially in the cloud arena. Thanks to the EU and the UK, Microsoft made commitments to GeForce Now, Boosteroid, Ubitus, etc., now, thanks to the UK CMA, the chances of them appearing on even more cloud gaming platforms increases, including non-Windows-based platforms like Stadia. I know Stadia doesn't exist, but for example, or like Luna, because Ubisoft Plus is available on Luna, or other cloud gaming platforms that might come up. Netflix, for example, they are more than likely to have an all-you-can-eat subscription model. Could Ubisoft license the Ubisoft titles and the Activision Blizzard titles to a Netflix in the future. Again, these things weren't on the table until the EU and the UK CMA challenged the Microsoft Activision Blizzard deal. So whilst it's very frustrating, or it seems that it's frustrating, you as consumers will benefit in the long run. There we go. Let me know what you think. You may not agree with me, but I'm just reading the facts as I find them from the sources, from Microsoft, from the UK CMA, from the Ubisoft, okay? And a little bit of Tom Warren of The Verge thrown in then for measure, okay? Put down in the comments what you think about all of that. I'd be interested to know. Uh, I regularly live stream every Monday, the Monday game chat, 10 p.m. UK times and all of that. If you like the video, don't forget to hit the likes because I like it. YouTube likes it and it helps people like you find content like this. And if you are new here, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button, toggle the notification bell, and that way you'll know when I go live with content just like this. And talking of content just like this, why don't you check out the titles right here. These videos here, you might like them. Cheers.